Good day everyone. Welcome to this lesson, Mathematics. We are going to concentrate on the topic Longitude and Latitude. Okay, before we proceed, we are going to talk a little about the Earth and then some other things. But be sure that at the end of this lesson, you should be able to describe the Earth as a sphere. You should be able to differentiate between great circle and small circle. And then you should be able to identify the lines of longitude and the lines of latitude on the surface of the Earth. You should be able to calculate the distances between places on the surface of the Earth. So then, let's go back to what we have here on the board. The Earth as a sphere. The Earth is usually considered as a sphere of radius about 6,357 kilometers to the poles and 6,378 kilometers to the equator in two major axes. And these axes are the north-south axis and east-west axis. Now, if you look at what we have here, the radius of the earth, uh, of a sphere is equal at all points. But for the earth, we discover that the radius to the poles and the radius to the equators are not exactly the same. And that is why we say the earth is considered as a sphere, but it's not actually spherical. But in geography, they have their proofs to show that the earth is spherical. And you can just imagine, why is it that here in Nigeria, we are now in the daytime, but if you go to another part of the country on the same earth, they are in the night. And that is, those are some of the proofs why we say the earth is spherical. Okay, this is a globe which is spherical in shape and all the lines here are what we shall explain in the course of this lesson. When I said the earth has a radius of this and this to the equator and to the poles, the end up here is the north pole and the down part here is the south pole. And what? The radius of the earth the north pole is from this is the center of the, the earth that is the equator from here up to this point is the radius we said to the poles that is the north and from here down to the south that's to the end points of the poles then the other one that I said to the equator look at this one here which divides it into two equal halves the radius from here to here is the radius at the equator Okay, so I want you to understand the two things we are mentioning here because it is supposed to be that that's only one radius, isn't it? And the radius from here to here is expected to be the same thing as the radius from here to this point. And if that happens, then we are going to say that it's completely spherical. Okay, but scientific investigation has shown that and calculations have shown that from here to here and from here to here are not actually the same. So I hope you understood why we say it's usually considered as a sphere, not that it's actually a sphere. Now, the north to south axis is called the polar axis. The end points are called the north pole and the south pole, respectively. This is what we are talking about here. This line that comes down to the center is what we call the polar axis. And the top part here is what we call the north pole. And the down part here is what we call the south pole. Okay. And the earth rotates about its polar axis every 24 hours. And that is why we have the, the 24 hours to make a complete day. Okay. As you can see on the board here, what is here on the board is actually what I'm trying to explain here. So you see the north pole, the south pole. This is the meridian. This is the radius that is from the center to the meridian and then this is the equator and uh, this is the polar axis. Now, this radius from here to here and the other radius from here to here is the radius of the equator and then from here to here is the radius of the poles and from here to here is the same thing as from here to here. So that's what I've just explained using this very one. As we proceed, I shall explain exactly what this radius also represents. So we have the equator, the polar axis and the south pole. Okay, the next thing concept I want us to understand here is great and small cycles. 
These are things that are also found on the surface of the earth. And we say a great cycle is a cycle from when a sphere is caught by a horizontal plane passing through its center. It is the largest cycle that can be drawn on the surface of a sphere with the, with the same center and radius as that of the sphere. Now this is what I think about. This is an example of a spherical object too. You know the normal football you know is also spherical. So if I cut this one to the center, whatever I will get is going to be a great cycle. That is, it will actually divide it into two equal parts. There is another one here. This is an orange and it's also considered to be spherical. So when I cut this one through, like this, through the center, you can see that I have two equal halves and this is a great cycle, this is also is a great cycle. Now, because <coughs> this is what we are trying to talk about here is that this part is circular just because we have peeled the orange and know it has some other things that is why the cycle is not properly formed. Else we would have just seen a complete cycle here and those are the things we call great cycle and then small cycle. Then, a small cycle is a cycle formed when a sphere is caught by a horizontal, horizontal plane passing through any part of the sphere other than the center. The other than the center, the radius of a small cycle is smaller than the radius of the sphere. Take for instance again, using this um, orange. If you know, if I cut through like this, then I will get a great cycle because it will only actually pass through the center, isn't it? But when we cut through a different point, let me cut here. Now, uh, you see, if you cut this, you see this is um, giving us actually the same size, isn't it? That is, it is a great size because I've actually cut through the center. Okay? And you can see the circular part form better than the other one I cut before. Okay? Because I've actually peeled the first one. Now, if I cut this orange again through, through any other part apart from the center, then what we are going to get is a small cycle. Let me just take this one now. If I cut this through this point, which is not the center, can you see the cycle we have here? Can you see this? Right? It's a small cycle because it's not up to the one if we are to cut it through the center like this. Okay? I hope you can observe that too. So this is a great cycle because it's through the center and this one is a small cycle. Okay. Alright, I haven't understood what great cycle and uh, small cycle are. Remember, we said all these ones are small cycles. Okay, but the one that cut across the center is a great cycle. And this is another good example of a great cycle. It's a sphere divided into two, which gives us a great cycle. So, we we'll move to the main thing now, which is lines of latitude and longitude. Now, see, imaginary lines are drawn on the surface of the earth to determine the location of any point or place known as lines of latitude and longitude. Let's say that any point at all, your village, your city, anywhere at all, can be located by the lines of longitude and latitude. I will say they are what? Imaginary lines. The imaginary lines, meaning that they are not lines you can see with our, with our eyes, okay? But they are there on the surface of the earth. Here we are on the earth, but have you ever seen any line on the earth? Of course, no. That's why we say they are imaginary. Now, this is how the lines look by this diagram. Now, this is a very good example of it. All these lines are the imaginary lines that are on the surface of the earth, okay? And even these ones too. Are you together? And some of these lines are latitudes and some of them are longitude. So as we proceed, you understand them very well. But then, let's concentrate on our diagram here. Look at this, we have the north and the south, west and east. Okay? Then we have, this is called the equator. Okay? Which is the center here. Which is called the equator. Then, 
these other lines that are above and below the equator are the lines we call lines of latitude. That is these ones. Okay. These ones, let me use follow them through with the red markers so that you can see them very well. They are lines we call lines of latitude. They are found on the north of the Ibeto and south of the Ibeto. And then on the east and west, we have the lines of longitude. That's these lines here. And the lines of longitude. Okay? So provided you have gotten, and they are found on the west and east of the prime meridian. Okay? This is our prime meridian, this one. Remember, this is our polar axis, okay? Uh -huh. And those are the lines that are found on the surface of the earth. The lines that are found on the surface of the earth, you see, are the boundary lines, and they are lines of latitude and lines of what? Longitude. Then let's talk about latitude. We say lines of latitude are imaginary lines on the earth's surface running from east to west, located on the north and south of the equator. This is what we mean. If I now call this one like this, take this one to be north, south, east, west, isn't it? You can see that the lines are moving this way. They are moving this way, isn't it? That is from east, west to east or east to west. Okay? And they are called the lines of latitude. The latitude of a place is measured in degrees north or south. Very important. Anything degrees north or degrees south means line of latitude. And they are found, remember as I said, above or below the equator. Above is north, below is south of the equator. Which is a great circle. That is the equator is a great circle. And the latitude of the equator is what? Zero. Take note. The equator, this one, is on latitude zero. So anything up, up, above it, you can have so many other lines here, just like I have here. This is our equatorizity. So I can have other lines up of it, and you have it there. And even in this diagram we have here, all this, this is our equator, okay? And then we have other lines above it. And that means, after it, I will have like one degree, at uh, two degrees, three degrees, up to 90 degrees. Because all at to the north of the equator, I'm, I'm numbered one degree to 90 degrees. While to the south, I'm numbered one degree south to 90 degrees south. Now, this is our, this is the equator. This is not of the equator, isn't it? So, we can now get that to one degree, that to two degrees, that to three degrees, four degrees, up to what? 90 degrees. Okay? And then, north. And then, on the south too, we can now have, after the equator here, remember the equator is on zero degrees. Are you with me? Then, anything Below it down is 1 degree, 2 degrees up to what? 90 degrees. That is the highest you can get when dealing with lines of latitude. So, if you check it very well, you now discover that all these lines of latitude, apart from the equator, are the small cycles we mentioned before. Isn't it? Because we said any line that is above the equator is a small cycle. Okay, and below the equator is a small cycle. So, lines of latitude are what? Small cycles. So we take also lines of longitude and then see what they are. Alright. Have you understood what we mean by lines of latitude? Let's also talk about longitude. The lines of longitude are imaginary lines on the earth's surface running from north to south located on the east. Don't forget to confuse yourself with this. Located on the east and west of the prime of Greenwich Meridian. Which is of longitude zero. That is the Greenwich meridian. This longitude is what zero. Now, take for instance here now. All these lines now. See, this is north. This is south, isn't it? So you see the line move from north to the south. That is why we say it's rolling from north to south. All these ones rolling from north to south. But they are located on the east and west of the prime meridian. Now, if I have this like this, taking this to be my prime meridian, then all these other ones are to the west and all these ones are to the east of it. Let me use the diagram here. Maybe it's a little more clearer. This is what we have. Then uh, this is the prime meridian. And the longitude of this prime meridian is zero degrees. Just like in latitude. We have the equator, isn't it? And we see the latitude of the equator is zero. So you should take note. Then all these lines, all these ones, including this, they are to the east of this prime meridian. 
Okay, and they also have all these ones too. Sorry, this is primary. This ones too. They are to the west of this prime meridian, and that is why we said they are located on the west and east of the prime meridian. So anything west and east is longitude, and then anything north and south is latitude. Take note of this one too. And then we say all longitude towards the east of the prime meridian are numbered one degree east to one hundred eighty degrees. East and one towards the west are numbered one degree west to 180 degrees west. Now, this is the east. If this is the primary, then, then this could be one degree, two degrees, and the last one here is 180 degrees east. The same thing here after the primary, then we have one degree, two degrees, and you know, we have you can have so many of them as many as you can get. Okay, and they are to the west. So, we started, we start from one degree west. 2, 3, up to 180. Okay? So, in the highest you can get the longitude is 180 degrees east or 180 degrees west. Then, the highest you can get the latitude is what? 90 degrees north or 90 degrees south. So, that is what we can say about lines of longitude. So, now see the, equa the equator and all longitudes are great cycles, while parallels of latitude are called small cycles. So the equator, you know equator is a large isn't it? But since it is at the center, it is a great cycle. And all longitude, all any line of longitude at all, as we have explained here, is a great cycle. Okay? And then all um, other lines of that apart from the equator are called what? Small cycles. And we have talked about small cycles and great cycles that time. Okay? Now, angles of that and longitude. We have been looking about longitude, latitude, longitude, latitude. So for you to now locate a point on the surface, you need to know the angle of its latitude and also its longitude. You see, any location on the surface can be described by its latitude and longitude in the same manner, locating the point on the graph using x and y coordinates. You know, on our normal graph, where you can have uh, just have the graph, this is y. This is x, you want to get the point, let's say here is 2, here is 3. If you bring the meat, let's say you have a point here, isn't it? And let's say it's called point A. If you use 2 and 3 to locate the point, that is x is 2, right like this. So the x is 3, y is 2. So in the same manner, we can now use the position of the latitude and the longitude, that's their angles now, to locate the position of the place on the earth surface. Now, say to locate the place of the earth's surface, simply find the point of the intersection of the line of latitude and the line of longitude of the place. Hence, the position of a place can be given as an ordered pair. So, in questions, it's always in bracket latitude, comma, longitude, just like the way we have x, comma, y in our normal graph. And I just set an um, example here. Example, canon. Let's say Kano is located on latitude 12 degrees north and is 105 degrees east. It's just a question, okay? And it can be written like this. Instead of this lat and this long, okay? Can be removed and then you have it just 12 degrees north, 105 degrees east. That is what we are trying to say here. So always take note that in original latitude, latitude comes before longitude in a bracket. And I say, remember. All points which lie on the same parallel of latitude have the same latitude. Because in the next thing we are going into is you have two different points and try to find distance between them. The points must either be on the same latitude or they will either be on the same longitude. So when they are on the same latitude, that means the latitude are the same. And points which lie on the same meridian have the same longitude. Don't forget, meridian means lines of what? Longitude. The parallel of latitude means lines of Latitude. Right, here are some examples for us to just look at briefly. And the first question here is locate the following points on the Earth's surface. And we have point A, about which is on 10 degrees north, 10 degrees east, then 30 degrees south, and 2 degrees east, and then M, 0 degrees and 9 degrees west. I want to say something here is this one is just 0 degrees, no direction whether north or south, isn't it? Remember, we said. The equator is zero, so the zero is equal to direct. So let's take solution. 
solution and the first one um, you first of all sketch sketch your vertical yeah. and when you do that you first of all draw the polar axis and the prime meridian then the equator these are the first things you have to put on the surface of the earth. Now with this, you see the equator has divided into north and south for you, and the prime meridian has divided into east and west for you. So you can now do anything you want to do. So the first part is 10 degrees north, 10 degrees east. So 10 degrees north, that means you know, remember the equator is zero, isn't it? So as you move up, you have one, two, up to 90. So those as you need to be here because in this case don't waste your time say you want to make a rule. So this is our 10 degrees north. Then you might uh, you say that the location of a place is where the latitude and the longitude meet, isn't it? So we have only gotten the latitude. Let's get the longitude and then we can now get the point. The longitude is 10 degrees east. So you know this one is from 0, 1, 2, 3, or 5, isn't it? So we just have our 10 degrees east. And you see the bit here, right? This is 10 degrees east. So this point is our bouncing. Okay? So this is the position of bouncing on the end surface that we have here. Right? Let's take the, the B part. The B part now, we have our spherical arc. Don't forget. The polar axis, prime meridian, and the equator, and then we have the north, the south, the east, and west. Now this one is degree is on 30 degrees south and 32 degrees east. So south that is here. We we'll now get our 30 degrees south. This is 30 degrees south, and then 32 degrees east. Still on the east. So you have your longitude. Okay, this is that two degrees east. And you see the intersection, isn't it? So this is the position where of the east. Okay, now let's take the last one. And I believe in what we have just done now, we're already approaching the logic now. Don't forget. And then we pay to. This one is on zero degrees. Now the zero degrees here simply means the equator. So the zero degrees is already the equator we have here. So let me just take it like this. And then 90 degrees west. Sorry, 9 degrees west. It's just 9. So you just have your 9 very close to the prime meridian. Remember we are not measuring. So this is our 9 degrees west. And then this is 0 and you see the bit here, right? And this is our point N. That is our point N. So this is how we can locate the position of a place on the earth surface. Okay? So in the next question, we are going to see how you can locate two different places on the earth surface and then see whether they are on the same longitude or on the same latitude. So that is the next question we are going to consider now. Question 2 it says locate the points P for 3 degrees north and on 3 degrees east and R for 3 degrees north and 57 degrees west. Now, as usual, you sketch your sphere. Right. This is one, one, two degrees east. 
and you can see that this point is here, isn't it? This uh, point P. Then the other one is on 43 degrees north. That's the same for this. You don't draw another one again. You have gotten that already. Then 57 degrees west. That is on the west. You have 57 degrees. That is you have something like this. And this is all 57 degrees west. And you now see that they meet here too. So this is our point R. So you can see that P and R are on the same latitude for 3 degrees west. No, sorry, latitude for 3 degrees north, isn't it? But they are on different longitudes. And that is that means they are what? In a small cycle. Remember we said any point that is on the line of latitude is a small cycle, isn't it? So they are on a small cycle. Okay? So this is how you're going to get two points. As we proceed, you can also locate three points and the rest. For instance, let me take for instance, let me add something here. Let's say I want to locate a third point Q. And that point Q is on latitude 50 degrees south and longitude 57 degrees west. Okay? Now, 50 degrees south means south of the epic, isn't it? So you are going to have something like this. Okay? This is 50 degrees south. Then longitude 57 degrees west. This is 57 degrees. So you don't draw it again. And already the 50 south and the 57 west meet at this point. Okay? So this is going to be your point Q. So you now see that R and Q lie on the same longitude 57 degrees west. And that means that R and Q are on the great cycle because say, all lines of longitude are what? Great cycle. If you so wish, you can locate any other point of your choice on this. Alright? And then we'll take the last question for today, which is question 3 here. They have given us the points already, and then let's see the questions they ask us to find and the other and the other two as well. The first thing is that you should write the points on the same latitude as A. You should write which point is on the same latitude as A? The first thing is that you locate where A is and its latitude. And you see any other point that lies on the same latitude as A, you write it out. So this is point A. This is point A. Okay? And this is the latitude of point A, which is that 60 degrees north, right? So now check. Is there any point that is on that same latitude? If you see it very well, it's called at point H and point B are on that same at 60 degrees north. So the points that are on the same latitude with A are H and B. That's all that is required of us here. Then let's take the second question that you write the points on the same longitude as A. The points on the same longitude as A. Now, if you see clearly, what is the longitude of point A? This is A and this is its longitude, isn't it? And you score that A is for longitude 100 degrees west. Alright, so if you follow through that 100 degrees, is there any other point that is on that same line? If you check through, you score that F is there and also E. So we have point F and E are on the same longitude with A. Then the last one, okay, C is, C is having some children here. Write the location of the following points. Point D. So, point D now. Now, if you want to write the location of the point, you have to write out its latitude and also its longitude. So, let's check D. Where is D now? Where is D? C, D here. Okay? Now, what is the latitude of D? Latitude of D is 75 degrees south. So, we'll write 75 degrees south, comma. And what is the longitude of D? C, D, okay? the longitude of D here and longitude is 50 degrees east so we have 50 degrees east then the next one is G you check for where G is have you seen G? see G here okay now what is the latitude of that point G? if you check you see nothing is written on this line that means it is the equator isn't it? and we say the equator is of latitude what? 0 degrees so just write zero degrees. 
If you like, you write 0 degrees north. If you like, you write 0 degrees south. And if you like, you leave it just 0 degrees. Nobody will pursue you because it's 0. Then, what is the longitude of that point? You see it here. And if you check, there is no number attached to it. And that means it's the prime meridian. And if you remember very well, you see the, lo the longitude of the prime meridian is also 0 degrees. So that means G is on 0 degrees over 0 degrees. Which that's the zero, that's the equator, which is zero, that's the prime meridian. Then we have um, the next point is C. Point C, you see C here. Okay? And C, the last of C is still the equator, that is zero degrees. And what is the longitude of that C? You see the line, C is nine, the longitude is fifty degrees east. So we have fifty degrees east. And uh, we have point E. Point E is here. And what is the latitude of that very point? You see the latitude here, which is 75 south. So we have 75 degrees south. And the longitude of point E, that is, this is the longitude, that is 100 degrees west. So we have 100 degrees west. And then Finally, point B. Point B, CB here. Okay, latitude here is 60 degrees north. 60 degrees north. And the longitude of this B is 50 degrees east. So we have 50 degrees east. And that is that. If so, if you like, we have to check out for D, G, C, E, B. Like you can also check for the other ones here. If you have not checked, like F, H, A, and you know.